You know, Proverbs is so amazing when you deal with the manifestation of the kingdom lifestyle, which is a luxurious lifestyle. Persecution, rejection, enemies, trials do not take away from the luxurious lifestyle of the kingdom. It doesn't take away that the kingdom is luxurious and it's fun and it's exciting. And it's so funny. Many people get so engrafted in attacks and opposition and things going on against them to the degree that they want to wrap the interpretation of the kingdom of heaven into those things. No, no, no. Those are things that come to overshadow the luxury of the kingdom. So, so, so Satan uses devices so that you'll be so overshadowed with those devices that you can't give glory to God and talk about the power of God's kingdom and talk about the power of God's hand and talk about the power of his, 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 his brain and the power of the angelic hosts. Did you know that God made angelic hosts to help you receive abundant provision? Did you know that there's angels of abundant provision? Their job is to make sure that you get provided for, but not just in enough measure, but that you get provided for in a running over aspect. Angels of abundant provision, they are not satisfied with just enough provision for you to handle this or that. Their whole mission statement, their goal, their mantra, they are energized to see you living in plenty. Just think about that. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 10 says, but the righteous, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Proverbs 28, verse 10 says, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Listen to these words. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 10 says, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Now, now look, it's dealing with your possessions. It says the upright. Those that are seeking after the Lord's voice, those that are seeking after obedience to his voice, those that are seeking his presence, those that are seeking after his words, those that are seeking to honor him with their finances. Those that are seeking to praise him, celebrate him all throughout their day, all throughout their week. They have their minds stayed on Jesus. It says they shall have good things in possession. Now, do you understand what this text is saying? It's saying that when you are doing things God's way, you're pursuing doing things God's way, the father starts to focus on your possession. He's looking at what you possess in your environment. And he's saying, I need to pick good things here. I need to pick some more good things here. Now, nah, that's not enough. That's not enough. You might think it's enough, but I need to pick some more good things here. I need to pick some more good things here. I need to pick some more good things here. It says that the upright shall have. Now, that word shall have is, is a very exciting word because it's explaining that you may not currently see it now, now. But that's what's coming towards you. See, one of the things that help you with joy while you're inside of a trial is recognition of what's on the way. Joy is the interpretation of an impending harvest. Have you taken notes? Write that down. Have you taken notes? Write that down. Did you catch that? That's some good stuff, man. Joy is 
the interpretation of an impending harvest. Man, that's some good stuff. That's some good stuff if you think about it. Because you're interpreting the harvest according to your faith, not according to your physical evidence. So Satan don't even know how you operating because Satan trying to throw stuff physically at you to create a belief system off of what Satan is showing. But because you have joy, which is a fruit of what? The spirit. The spirit of God. You're only seeing the, the, the harvest in route. Say, if you take a note, write this down. I have harvests that are big, wide, and will abide that I haven't physically possessed yet. I have harvests that are big, wide, and will abide. Do you know what abide mean? Abide mean continue. It's perpetual. It's continuous. It's ongoing. It doesn't stop at one season. It doesn't stop after a period of time. It is meant to keep on going on and on to the break of dawn, till you break your thong. Hey, you know, hey, man, I ain't trying to play with you. I need five people to share this broadcast. Why you ain't share the broadcast? <laughs> I need to know. I want to know why you ain't share the broadcast. That's why I want to know. You saying at me, you looking at me, I'm looking at you. You looking at me, I'm looking at you. Well, why you ain't share the broadcast? There about five people tell us, I don't even wear no thongs. That's the problem. That's the problem. You don't. You haven't received shoestring ministry. That's the problem. You haven't received no shoestring ministry. That's your problem, baby. That's your problem. Hmm. That's your problem. That's that's that's. That's one of that's one, that's a sickness you need to be healed from. <laughs> now look at this in Proverbs chapter twenty eight. Proverbs chapter twenty eight. It's talking about the upright shall have good things in possession. <laughs> you, <laughs> that'd be funny. You you women like to wear you know you like to wear them shoestrings and then when your time come now you go back to Golden Girl. Thank you for being my friend. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you 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 go from city girl city girl city girl city girl. Then you go all the way back to thank you for being my friend. I finally got a piece of the pie. <laughs> and the George Jefferson. What you talking about, Willis? Then you go big thing, big thing, big thing, big thing. I can't be with no woman that talk like that. She big T, big T, big T. I can't be with no woman talk like that. You, what you want for, for breakfast? <laughs> I want some. Give me some green eggs and ham. Give me some green eggs. No, I ain't nothing happened. I just had a nightmare. I just, just. You be up there, they be like, I gotta use the restroom. You be like, all right. Then you go follow them to the restroom just to peek and see if they if they standing up. This is the first date. Yeah, uh -huh. Oh, she about to go. Everything. Saints, why wicked people, wicked people be naming their bad children Bible names? <laughs> they be naming their children. The child be bad. They be like, this is Josiah. <laughs> Josiah be out there on the block telling us, man, you know they don't want nothing to me, man. 
Be the name of Josiah, man. They be naming the bad children. The girl be up there prostitute. They be telling us, this is Esther. Yeah, I had her. Uh, it, was, it was two complications I had. The complication was so strong one night. I fell asleep. But my charger was right underneath my pillow. I got electrocuted when I woke up. And zzz, zzz, they put me in critical condition. And she came out. And when she came out with a shocking thing, her hair was pointed in different ways, like she was electrocuted. <laughs> she came, she came out with her hair stick up like Edward Scissors' hands, <laughs> like Edward Scissors' hands. It was different ways. So the electrocution didn't just happen to me; it happened to her too. <laughs> so this is my miracle baby. I called her Esther. It's Esther right here. It's Esther, you know? And Esther be like, big, 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 And Esther up there rapping. Sound like, sound like, sound like a big old, big old, big old UFC fighter. That's just the Chronicles. Bad people be, they got bad children. They give them biblical names. Man, a pedophile. They're talking to me, man. This Moses right here. My son Moses, we're going to court. We're going to court for Moses. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 18. It says, whosoever walketh uprightly shall be saved. But he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. Look at verse 19. Now, before I go to verse 19, look at verse 18. It says, whosoever walketh uprightly shall be saved. Do you know what that means? When you keep the kingdom system of sowing and reaping, serving and submitting, sanctifying yourself, and stand in seeking posture, chasing after the Lord, is saying that you shall be delivered from any evil that come up against you, anything that you hear come up against you. But look what it says in verse 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Now, saints, I, I want you to catch this. It says, he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. bread. I want to take your angle here. It says, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. So in verse 19, it's talking about the person that got work ethic. It's talking about the person that's working. It said that he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. So it's talking about the person that is using their time to, to, to be used by God. Their body is being used by God. They're making money. I want you to hear this. It says, but he that falleth after vain persons. You know, vain persons are, are, are dominated by what we call the spirit of vanity. That's why they're called vain persons. So they have vanity, which means that they spend their time doing nothing. It says, he that falleth after people that don't make money shall have poverty enough. Now watch this here. Watch this here. Look what it says right here. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Okay, okay, okay. That's what it said, right? That's what it said, right? He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Now let's go to Genesis chapter four. He that tilleth his land shall have what? Plenty of bread, right? He that tilleth his land, tilleth, right? Right? Okay, 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 okay. All right, so let's go here. He that tilleth his land all right, so let's go to Genesis chapter four, verse two. It says, and Eve, she bare Cain's brother and named him Abel. Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now let's go back to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Plenty of bread. Okay, let's go to Genesis 4-2. 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 Genesis 4-2.
Cain was a tiller of the ground. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Okay, let's go to Genesis 4, 2. Cain was a tiller of the ground. So saints, I want you to catch this. Cain was working hard. Cain had a lot of money. So it was real ludicrous for Cain to rob God of what God was telling him to sow because he had a lot. He had plenty of bread. So saints, there's something that happened in Genesis chapter four. Cain went crazy. Before he killed his brother, he went crazy because the level of wickedness that he operated in was he had abundance but he didn't see God as his abundance. So he gave God the smallest amount. Then he got angry when he saw his brother getting blessed with abundance. And he started comparing himself. And God said, oh, if you do what I want, won't you be better? Cain had plenty of bread. That was the same thing with the man with the one talent. He had million, over a million. So, when you look at this from this angle, you understand why Cain, he had to release so much dark decision-making because he had the power to release a lot of light. I want you to listen to me. Watch this here. When you are given power by God to release a lot of light and you refuse, you have to end up releasing a lot of darkness. My goodness. You don't understand this. Judas was highly anointed. So, 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 so if Judas don't practice that high anointing, Judas has to practice high iniquity. Because it's, it's like an oxymoron, it's like a balance. If you've been given much and much is required of you, and you reject the much that's required of you, you have to do much that's not required of you. See, you become, watch this here. You, you are in dominion when God gives you much because you could do a lot of light with that much. But if you reject that, now you have to become a slave to do a lot of darkness. Now you understand why you can listen to a prophet Joshua Holmes you feel powerful, and, and then ah, rah, 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 you end up saying, nah, I ain't going to do that. Nah, and and then, then all of a sudden, you find yourself smoking weed. See, see now, you, you, you became a slave to that because it's a lot of light being given to you. It's a lot of light being given to you. So if you refuse to use a lot of light, now you got to operate in a lot of darkness. That's why for ages, people have gone to what they call church. They have gone to what they have called prayer. But then they are the worst of people. They gossip. They can't control their sexuality. They can't control their mind. They can't control their words. Because when you have a lot of light being given to you, if you don't use the light, you have to become a slave to operate in darkness. You watch this here, and here this is so powerful. You can't not use the light and say, even though I didn't use the light, I ain't gonna do no darkness. No, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Because the minute that you say I ain't gonna use the light, demons say, Oh, okay, now we got a door. They don't open up the door to us. And the Bible says that spirits, they the spirit come back with seven more wicked spirits and say, let me occupy the house. So seven more wicked spirits. So that means that you start doing stuff worse than what you did before the light had came. Let me give you an example. So when you didn't have the level of light, you didn't do that much evil. But when the level of light come, if you refuse the level of light, you will do more evil than what you did when you didn't have that level of light. It makes sense, right? 
Before Judas met Jesus, Judas didn't betray like that. The betrayal happened after Jesus. Because the light was high. So if Judas rejects the high light and the high life, Judas has to go higher in darkness, deeper in darkness rather, than Judas went before Jesus even recruited him to be a disciple. Wow. Before Jesus met Peter, Peter never denied God like that. Peter never started cussing and say, I don't know nothing about no God, man. I don't know nothing about no God. He had never did that. But now the highlight came and he's refusing the highlight. He has to go deep into darkness and he finds himself talking stuff that he ain't never talked before. Man, I'm, I'm I, 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 no notes. You forgot? There ain't no notes. Every day. So when God introduces you to his kingdom of sowing and reaping, if you don't engage his kingdom, life actually becomes worse than it was when you heard the kingdom. It, 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 be, it, 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 becomes, it, it becomes way worse than when you didn't hear about the kingdom. Saints, watch this here. So let me show you something in the Bible that's going to be so powerful. So now you understand why the children of Israel were saying when we was with Pharaoh, we had it like this. Ain't nothing was, it, it wasn't like this. What the children of Israel didn't catch was when you was with Pharaoh, the light had not come yet. Moses is the light. So, 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 so you telling the light when I was in darkness, I ain't even experienced all this yet. I mean, I ain't even go through all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you was in darkness. There was no reason for the level of examination to hit you because you didn't have the light to even be hit with that level of examination. You was in darkness. So that's unfair. That's why the Bible says, he that knoweth that it is, it, it is, it is, it is wrong to do and does it, it is called sin in the book of James. So you got to know, you got to have to have, and when you know the truth, it's called light. Now you understand, light is the knowledge of truth. Light is when you have revelation of something that God is telling you. It's when you're introduced to the informational avenues of God. So if God start teaching you about sowing and you enter into a phase in your life where you're not sowing, what's of darkness is going to start happening to you because God gave you a level of light to let you be able to measure out your life and say, if I can't sow, something the hell is wrong here. Now, now, because God told, if God, watch this here. If God tell me that he want me to run six years ago and, 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 and two years passed within that six year. And then I, I, I'm like, man, I ain't got nowhere to run. Something is wrong. Because God taught me something that he wanted me to do. And now I, I can't do what he taught me. So 
It's not just, okay, I ain't doing what God taught me, but I ain't going to do no evil either. No, 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 no. No, nigga, no, nigga, no, no, no. No, no, no. Listen, 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 listen. If I can't run, that means the door is open to the demons that heard God teach me to run. My gosh. Demons listen to the instruction more than you do. They listen to the Mount of Transfiguration conversation. They listen to the Beatitudes. Blessed is the meat, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. You might forget. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You probably forget that, but the demons still got the record. While you blind, while you distracted, they still heard what God said. And they know when they see your activity turn. When they see you going to the left, they say, ah, yeah, okay. Is our cue to going in? Ain't no fire going to burn us. Ain't no blood of Jesus going to stop us because they not underneath the authority of Jesus no more. They underneath our authority. They gave us that authority. We watching it because we know that the Lord told them to run. They don't run. So we watching them physically defy him. So now we have authority to go in. And saints, that's what goes on. If you don't use the light that God gives you, the gospel light, the kingdom light, God right there can't even help you when the demons that watch your rebellion, they see that you defy what he taught you. They watch right there and they say, okay, now the coast is clear. Let us go return. What you going to do? What you going to say? I bind you, Satan. No, no. The way that you bind Satan firstly is by obedience to my commandments. Psalm 112 verse 1 and all. Blessed is the man that delighteth greatly in the Lord, that, that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. You see? The way that David interpreted somebody binding Satan firstly is by fearing the Lord and delighting greatly in their what? In his what? Commandments. So imagine you don't obey his commandments. You don't fear him. Those demons that watch you know, ain't no hedge here. Because they're not using the light. Now you know uh, what Galatians, bless God, saying five, chapter five, verse one, says that stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ have made you free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke. Of what? It had to clarify because Jesus has a yoke. It says, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So the only way you can get entangled again with the yoke of bondage is if you get entangled, if you disentangle yourself with the yoke of Jesus. So when Jesus start teaching you, he's giving you his yoke. What did the word say? Come learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So when you're learning of Jesus, you're learning of the kingdom of heaven. You're learning what Jesus wants. The reason why Jesus is looking at the woman while everybody is given, he's looking at the woman with the two mites because she caught his attention because she's doing what he wants. That's why he starts to talk about her. The conversations that go on in heaven right now is the Lord talking about people that is doing what he wants on earth. That's why angels, they, they go at lightning speeds and enter into your life and they minister things that he gossiped to them to minister while they was in heaven. They bring it to you on earth. It's called the harvest. 